All right, everybody, with Joe off talking to footballers, you've got me this week. And with the January transfer window having slammed shut last night, we have to talk about it. Oh, yeah, Sonny's also um, working in the background. Wave. Hello. Now, whilst this deadline didn't see any huge, huge moves worth £50 million, like Fernando Torres back in the day, David Luiz, uh, we did have a kind of udden situation that actually paid off this time uh, with the Bamiyang and Barcelona. But we also had crazy rumours, lots of movements between clubs, deals failing in the end, like the Liverpool deal with Fulham for Carvalho. They will just move to them in the summer anyway. Um, and we had a few transfers on deadline day. So today we're going to be looking at some of the top transfers that happened in January and ranking them. Now, this is a tier list, so we've got to have our tiers. And I've not gone for the old S, A, B, whatever it is. I've gone for our top tier being what a transfer. We're then going with good, could work out well, bad and awful. Now, without further ado, let's kick it off. Kicking it off then, we're going to have Delhi Alley. Now, this came out of nowhere. Also on deadline day, Everton signed Frank Lampard as their manager. And he got straight to work with two signings, one that we'll get onto a little bit later. But Delhi Alley was one of them. Now, we've spoken a lot about Delhi Alley on Football Daily. I've said before that I am actually a fan of his watching him play football uh, during his prime, I guess, considering he's only still in his mid 20s. Um, was really, really enjoyable when he played that second striker role behind Harry Kane. Christian Eriksen was there, was there in midfield, really creative for them. Another player that we'll get onto later on. Delhi Alley was great. I mean, he had his season back in 2016 17 where he scored 18 goals and got nine assists in the league uh, the season after that he got nine goals and 11 assists um, and then it kind of drops off from 18 19 onwards five goals three assists uh, 19 20 did pick up eight goals four assists uh, but then it really did drop off he got only one assist last year um, and so far this season he's only got one goal now there's several different uh, reasons for Deli Ali's drop off people have also said towards his attitude I think Spurs fans have have admitted um and he's played under a lot of different managers who some people play formations that just just don't use him. He's surplus to requirement. Uh, under Frank Lampard, I think we've always said that uh, a move away for Deli Ali is the best thing for him. Uh, and so this is really, really good to see whether his career can pick up. Now, I don't think he's going to be getting back into the England team straight away. or It could take a good year or so for him to, to pick back up. But I do think this is a... Good. Mm, could work out well. Could work out well, I think. I think good is a little bit too early to to call because obviously his his um, performances recently and of the past couple of years haven't been good. And so we don't know what kind of player Everton are going to be getting. I think at least now that the pressure is off, he doesn't have the people saying about his, his Spurs career and what happened a few years ago with Spurs. It's very much a fresh start here. And so he doesn't have to look back on the nearly 20 goals that he scored in one season. Um, I think under Frank Lampard as well, the formations that he'll play, he is quite um, adaptive. He's an adaptive manager. He has played through at the back. He's played 4-3-3. He's played 4-2-3-1. He's also played 4-3-1-2. So there's ways that he can fit them in in this Everton side. And so I also feel with Frank Lampard as his manager, a player who kind of played in a similar position, a goal-scoring midfielder, what we've always kind of said Ali was, uh, if not maybe that second striker role, he can learn from him. I mean, if it doesn't work under Frank Lampard, Delhi's done, isn't he? Moving on to our next one, and I will try and keep some of these quite short and simple, like this one, Alvarez. Um, I think it's a a, a a could work out well. Um, good, good. Mm, no, could work out well. Because the, the thing with Alvarez is you just don't know whether he's going to be starting, to be quite honest. Um, they've sent him back out on loan to River Plate. Uh, he's had a fantastic season there, it has to be said. He scored 36 goals in 96 appearances for River Plate. He's not necessarily a wonder kid because he is 22 years old now. But the fee that uh, Man City paid for his release clause, £14 million for someone who has the potential to be great. I mean, in South America, they consider him one of the best talents in the uh, in the country or continent, I should say. My only worry necessarily for him is whether he will play for Man City. 
Um, it's not like when Gabriel Jesus joined and he kind of slowly got embedded into the side. He's, he's, he can play across the front three, so I guess that is useful, and we maybe will see him rotated in and out. Um, but I still feel like Man City are going to go for someone like Erling Haaland in the summer, and so he's not going to be playing in his prime position. They also then still have Riyad Mahrez, Bernardo Silva, Raheem Sterling, um, uh, Phil Foden, just to name a few of the people that play out on the wing. Um, also keeping in mind they've got Cole Palmer as well, who they who they really like and want to bring into the side. And so I have a feeling that maybe he won't quite feature that prominently for Man City and in two, three years we may see him sold on. He may not be the level that Man City need for him over the next couple of years but who knows it might work out 14 million euros really isn't that much especially to a team like man city they've beaten manchester united who were also interested um to the post for him gone back on loan to river plate i assume probably will go on loan again next season so overall it's it's, it's fine it could work out well lucas Digne now now this one is quick simple good good maybe mm, maybe teetering on water transfer but for now it is good it's really good um obviously uh, we've we've said for a while on football daily especially me that i think aston villa um could always improve in, in that that left back department Ma matthew <laughs> target matty target uh, is a Premier League left back, he's fine, but he's always someone that could have been improved, and they have done. Um, obviously, with Frank Lampard now at Everton, I'm pretty sure he's quite fuming that he's missed out on Digne. But Lucas Digne is coming to this Everton side. He's an improvement already. Started pretty well, even though he was maybe at fault for one of the one of the goals in his first game. Um, yeah, I think it's a really, really good transfer. Uh, as I said, maybe not quite what a transfer because that's only going to have a couple of people in it and I'm already thinking about who's going in there now. But really good transfer. We all know the level that Digne uh, plays to and I think it's perfect for, for Steven Gerrard. Moving on to Brentford now uh, and we have to look at the transfer that they brought in. Christian Eriksen uh, going into good this um, because Eriks for, for some team like Brentford where they didn't necessarily have that creative midfielder is very much in Buemu and and Tony up top uh, and they're kind of three in midfield Norgard uh, and the other, the other two that are just escaping my mind right now weren't necessarily the creative monsters and so they have kind of missed out on on a creative midfielder Eriksen's perfect for this obviously it's great to see that five months on from what happened in the Euros he's back and he's he's been given a chance to play and hopefully we do see the same player because also towards the end of the season for Inter Milan when obviously he won the Serie A for them as well was very very instrumental in that but towards the end was really really good too for Antonio Conte and to be quite honest even if Ericsson performs at just a 6 out of 10 for the majority of his time at Brentford for these 6 months like it's still a good transfer they've paid nothing for him um, I think Ericsson has the dominant hand here because if he does have an unreal 6 months he's not signed that extra year Year, meaning he can maybe get an improvement he doesn't have to worry about um a, a club having to pay a transfer fee he can move as a free agent um but if he has a half decent one then he can maybe sign a bit of a long-term contract with brentford in the summer he gives himself enough time to kind of reevaluate his reevaluate his options in the summer so yeah i think that is definitely a good transfer pierre emrique Aubameyang to barcelona now this mm, good could work out good could work out Good. From an Arsenal point of view, right, they've got their Deadwood out, they've got the, the, the troublemakers out, uh, they've dealt with this. I mean, look, they've they've not got any money for him. It could have been dealt in a, in a better situation. They had him on 300k a week. I think they're still paying um, a decent amount of his contract as well for the six months, but then the next season, I think Barcelona take, take it on. I think it's a free transfer anyway. But from a Barcelona point of view, it's supposedly reported that Bamiang has dropped his wages as well to be able to fit into the Barcelona team uh, and get registered. So overall, if they're not paying him dramatic wages like he was on at Arsenal, 300k a week, maybe he's on 150, 100. Uh, I think it's pretty good. Like, okay, Aubameyang hasn't been good for the past couple of years now. Since the season, he scored 22 goals back in 2019-20. I mean, before that, it was another 22 goals in the league. Uh, but even last year, it was 10 in the Premier League with three assists and 29 appearances. It's not, it's not terrible. It's not obviously £300,000 a week worth. Um, but it, in, in La Liga, where obviously it's a bit more of a slower league and his pace will be unbelievable, um, I think he's it's a, it's a good signing um, for Barcelona. Obviously, they've brought in Ferran Torres. They've still got Depay. Um, Ansu Fati, when he plays, is amazing. Like, they've not necessarily 
improved their squad. But if you're a Barcelona fan, I'd like to know it's actually in the comments. I think you're pretty happy with these transfers in January. I mean, going into January, the reports were that Barcelona couldn't even afford a single player. And so the fact that they've now come out of it and managed to get uh, Ferran Torres and Aubameyang and uh, Traore, who we'll get on to soon, I think it's pretty good. Okay, on to Newcastle now. Now, this one, Bruno Guimaraes, is an unbelievable transfer. What a transfer. Going in at the very top, mainly because did not see this coming. I mean, he was linked to Champions League clubs. Um, he was playing for a team that was has, has Champions League ambitions. Um, and he was linked to Arsenal. Arsenal were, were very, very highly rumoured to be getting him. And then he's moved to Newcastle United. Um, I mean, wages-wise, you can understand why. Uh, he, he's on a lot of money in the north of England, uh, the northeast of England. And so it's understandable. Maybe other teams weren't willing to pay so much. The fee's around £40 million, uh, which is a lot of money. And obviously their new owners have been spending it quite willingly and freely. Uh, but look. In terms of a player, he's unbelievable. He's really, really good. Newcastle needed a midfielder to play alongside um, someone like John Joe Shelby, and, and he's going to be that guy, you would assume. Uh, it, it's almost a little bit like when Carlos Tevez signed for West Ham. It's, you just didn't expect it. Um, and it's some the level that he, he, he has is, is incredibly good. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how he performs in in a Newcastle side. I think obviously the aim still is to, to not get relegated. I don't think they're going to be looking much further than that. Um, and whether he quite realises how bleak it was at Newcastle before this January is, is interesting. But I mean, whilst we're on Newcastle, we might as well move on to um, the others. I mean, I've here added these two together and there's obviously other transfers as well that could have been added. Dan Byrne and Chris Wood. Um, along with this, I'm going to put them in good, but along with this, you can add uh, Matt a target who's come from Villa and also Kieran Trippier who joined early in the window I think they're all good signings like they have to have been I mean what the, what who they've been replacing wasn't that hard to be to be good to be quite honest as I said the Saudis have, have come in and spent their money and, and spent it pretty well it seems like Newcastle kind of went in with top targets to go for um Bruno being the one that they got and then kind of from there was if they got knocked back, which they did. I mean, Sven Botman was linked to them. They got knocked back. Um, they then went for a, a more reasonable target like Dan Byrne, which again, worked out pretty well. I think it is a good transfer. Uh, Matt Target on the left back situation. We spoke about him earlier. A Premier League left back. Like he is absolutely fine. Something that Newcastle need. Kieran Trippier, 2018, was considered one of the best fullbacks in the world. And so he's also now at Newcastle and, 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 and I mean, has died okay. Um, and so... So yeah, I mean, Chris Wood, another one. I mean, if they would have maybe seen who Burnley actually got, which again, we'll get on to, they could have probably targeted him because Burnley spent half the money for it. Uh, half the money that they got from uh, Newcastle on him in Veghorst. But uh, yeah, overall, good transfers. I think Eddie Howe will come out of this beaming. Um, if they don't stay up, that's where it's going to be interesting. Do they have relegation clauses? Do the wages drop dramatically? Does Bruno has a clause where if they get relegated, he can get sold on for, for half the price, whatever it may be? These things we just won't know until that happens. But if I'm being honest, I'm going to put my neck on the line with these transfers. I don't think they're going to get relegated. I mean, also, that's like... They're just a lot worse teams out there, innit? Moving on to Liverpool now, and they nearly made the move for Carvalho from Fulham, as I mentioned, but that fell through late in the day. I think Nico Williams still went to Fulham, though. Um, but the guy that they did sign, Luis Diaz. Now, this oh, it could be a water transfer. It could be water transfer. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Now, I'm going to explain why it's good, because... Oh, is it good? No. It's what a transfer. It's a what a transfer. Now, obviously, um, Diaz throughout the past couple of seasons has been fine at Porto. He scored, I think, two, six goals last season. Uh, the season before that, another six goals. But this year, he's gone supernova. He's whacked in 14 goals in the league in just 18 appearances and got five assists. He was also really, really good in the Champions League. I remember against uh, Man City, one of the goals he scored was outrageous. But £37.5 million, pounds plus I think we can get to about 50 if bonuses are met, or clauses are met, I should say, is really good, man. Like, they've thought 
thought about the future here. He's not necessarily young. He's 25 now. Um, but it is good for their kind of long-term future. They've not gone and bought a wonder kid or someone where the potential um, is still kind of questionable because they're only 21, 22. They know what they've got with Diaz and that he can improve. I mean, Liverpool just make fantastic business signings every single time, it feels like. And with this situation, it also helps him out in the long term. Like, he's not going to replace Salah or Mane this season, but it will be a slow kind of integrated into the side of this six months, probably the first six months of next season as well. And then you might see, start to see him possibly replacing one of them when they hit their 30, 31, 30 age. Uh, and more so Mane at that. I mean, contract talks as well. It puts him in a good advantage for any of the kind of... Um, of those two in Mane or Salah, we've spoken a lot about Salah's contract. Um, if any of them are complaining too much, they can kind of say, well, look, we've we've got a guy that is a kind of ready-made replacement. He's already fitted into the side. He plays really well. Uh, I mean, this is a little bit of predicting the future, but you would assume so. Um, and so, you know, if you don't drop your wage demands, we'll just use this guy instead it's not the end of the world and so overall from a from a Liverpool point of view it's fantastic it's a really really good move fair play to Diaz as well um overall yeah what a transfer what a transfer indeed Felipe Coutinho now um good uh, mm, I'm gonna go with could work out well but I feel like it actually if I could I'd put it on half and half uh mainly because look Coutinho isn't the guy he was when he was playing for Liverpool uh, mm, is it good? I feel maybe a little bit harsh putting him could work out well. Oh, I really don't know. I really don't know. Could work out well. Yeah, screw it. I'll stick to my guns. Uh, as I said, like I feel like this is 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 fine. Um, I don't know whether they're going to buy him in the summer. It's an option to buy with thirty three million pounds, which is fine. And obviously Gerard came in and just showed his pulling power straight away. Got one of his old boys back. Um, and so far, obviously he's had a, had a very good game against um, Manchester United when he came on. Uh, and so actually, no, you know what? Because of that it is a good transfer. It is a good transfer, and I, I feel like we will probably start to see more of the Coutinho that we all we all know and love from from back in the days. Had a rough time at Barcelona, and actually, yeah, good transfer, good transfer. I've changed my mind. Moving on to the Tottenham boys, Kulusevski and Bentancur. Now, this is going and could work out well. Um, obviously, they've got rid of a few players. Uh, Lo Celso went to Villarreal. Tangi on Dombele we'll get on to. Um, I'm trying to think if they've missed out on anyone else. Hey, sir. Huh? Brian Hill. <laughs> Brian Hill as well also was sent out on loan. Um, and so, yeah, bringing in these two, I think, is fine. I mean, Bentaker is an absolute pressing machine. He'll run his socks off. Obviously, bring in um, the, the ginger Swede, as he's always in my head, as... Um, on the on the right wing too and so like i think they're fine transfers um they are very much ones that that could work out well my worry is i'm not necessarily expecting them to hit the ground running obviously they've not been playing at juve this season juve aren't aren't necessarily in the best of form either but one thing I will say is if these are what Conte wanted and they are the men that he wanted, which I also, again, don't feel like they are 100%, then they're, they're, they're fine. Conte obviously wanted Diaz as well, and he went to Liverpool instead. And so they're fine transfers, but I'm not necessarily expecting them to light up the league. I'm really, really not. One thing that is good from Spurs is they have got out, again, the troublemakers, I guess so, like a little bit like Arsenal. Maybe not troublemakers, but but players who who weren't playing and were eating up huge wages like Ndombele. Um, and so these guys, I think the thing for them is the bar is set low. The bar is set very low. And so they've not got to do too much to at least be half impressive. And, and I guess at least with Benton Co, it's a little bit more of a, a, a different option in midfield to what they have currently. Okay, whilst we're speaking about Spurs, we might as well speak about the guys that they have loaned out. Brian Hill went to uh, Villari Valencia on loan. Um, Villarreal got Lo Celso. But the one I want to talk about is Tangi Ndombele. Now, I'm going to put this in bad for one reason only. It's so I've currently got no one else in bad. Um, and, and I'm looking at the rest of the options. And I don't know whether they're going to be going in bad either. Now, the reason I'm going to say that he's going in bad is if Leon actually buy him for the option that they've been quoted of £54 million in the summer. I mean, that would be a ridiculous ridiculous fee considering that Spurs paid 63 million for him back in 2019 he is Spurs' record signing it's tough with him Nombele because there is certainly a player there a talented player there and someone who when he is on his day is a game changer he's one of the best players on the pitch he's a joy to watch on the pitch he's fun he's athletic um skillful 
but we've not seen that a lot for him in Spurs and, and in the Premier League. And sometimes it just doesn't work out for players in the Premier League. But he could easily go back to Leon here. And Leon do need a, a boost um, for the way that their scene is going, season is going. And he could be that man. If he goes back and, and becomes the guy that he was uh, previously to joining Spurs, it's a great transfer for them. But, as I said, right now, I just think if they get the Tangi and Dembele that we've seen for Spurs, it's not good. And if they do go and buy him in the summer for the option that they've been quoted, it's bad. And no one else is in bad. And I couldn't really go without this whole video without putting someone in bad. Let me know if you think there was a better, worse transfer in this video or that we speak about in general in the comments below. Moving on to Everton again, and we're going to talk about Van der Beek. Uh, could work out well straight away. Again, even teetering on on good. Um, I mean, from his point of view, he needs to go to the world or he wants to go to the World Cup in the, uh, in the wintertime. He needs to play football to do that. And he's played zero football at Manchester United. It's a sad one because I think when he joined United, everyone expected a lot from him. And, and, and it's not necessarily that he hasn't proven it. He's just not played. Under Oli, he wasn't playing. And now under Ralph, he's not playing. Um, for Frank Lampard, it's it's interesting. I mean, there's a lot of midfield options now. Um, Gomez, Decore, Alan were already there. Now they've got Deli Alley. Now they've got um, uh, uh, Van der Beek, who's just completely blanked out of my mind. And um, there's also some of the youngsters as well who, who've played who played in midfield sometimes for them. Um, and so there's definitely ways to fit him. I think he won't necessarily want to play. He won't necessarily be playing in the position he wants to, especially now that Deli Ali has joined. Um, but maybe more of a centre mid role, maybe more at times as well DM. But I think right for him, he just wants to be playing. And I think at least with Everton, and if he can prove the level that he he can get to, or, or we know he can get to, like he was at Ajax, then he will be playing week in week out. I think overall it's a could work out, out well transfer again could even be good could even be good moving on to barcelona again actually and we're going to talk about adama triore um it's a fine move to barcelona again goes and could work out well like a quite a few of these guys I actually looking at some of them i feel quite bad for alvarez i feel like i should maybe move him up but i'm not going to once they're in there i'm not changing them um but yeah no triore at barca for a barca point of view again it is pretty good they've they've not paid a fee yet it's on loan um, I think they will pay all of his wages as well um, for the for the rest of this season. And if it works out well, they can buy him in the summer. I've not seen the reported fee yet for how much that will be. But Barcelona have Ansu Fati, who is fantastic, but he is injured quite a lot. And so for a rotation option in Triore, I think that's pretty good. And who knows, maybe Triore will finally find his end product in Spain. We've always said that Triore has all the capabilities to be a great footballer, especially a great winger. He is ridiculously quick, super strong, great on the ball. But what he isn't good at is that end product. From a Wolves point of view, you're not missing out on much. He scored one goal this season and wasn't really creating that much. He didn't have a single assist. And by the end of the, his time at Wolves, under Bruno Large especially, Bruno Large wasn't even playing him. He was benching him. He was bringing him on with like 15 minutes to go. And so I also kind of feel like Wolves have gone, you know what, we trust you here, Bruno. Like Bruno is Large is has shown the manager that he he is and the and, and a good level of a manager that is and so go and look if 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 we can get a good amount of money here for trial in the summer and you don't want him is that fine for us to do then large and large said yeah that, that's absolutely fine um i mean i wasn't necessarily on the call so i don't know if it is exactly word for word like that but yeah it could work out well for both clubs to be quite honest yeah it's fine dusan vlahovic um Let's go quite quickly and put it in a good transfer for Juventus. Now, if Arsenal had bought him, had bought him, I should say, I think it probably would have gone into could work out well. Um, he has been elite for the past season and a half. He's scored 21 goals last season. He's on 17 already this year in just 21 games when he's playing for Fiorentina. But it is worth mentioning the season before that, when he played 30 games, he only scored six goals. Um, and so... Uh, like there is a guy that has broken onto the scene. He was very young when he scored six goals. And then the season after that, he scored 21. And he scored 17 this year. Um, and so from a Juventus point of view, £66 million is a lot of money. But they've bought a player who's worked well in their league. And so they kind of know what they're getting. They know that he has been successful um, playing in Syria and can do that for Juve. Juve need that. They need a goal scorer. Having lost Ronaldo, they've lost a lot of goals. Alvar Morata hasn't picked that up. He's been average, to be quite honest. Um, and so, yeah, getting in someone like Vlahovic kind of secures their future. 
for them. I think this season, it doesn't look like they're going to win Serie A, but next season with someone like Vlahovic, and if he, if he continues to keep banging in goals, they're back up there in the title race and in the title contention. Fiorentina couldn't really do too much about it. Like Vlahovic said, he basically wanted to move now and, and, and obviously the right amount of money came in for them to do so. He's only 22 and he's signed a four-year deal as well. For, so for him, like he's at a pretty good point. He could come out of this without uh, having been, been even better and, and continued his goal-scoring form. At only 26 and and can get a move without having to have a gigantic fee being paid for him so overall yeah good transfer um i kind of hope it works out for him because he's just a huge monster but talking about huge monsters there's a reason i've left him last joe tomlinson would be so happy and i'm actually really really sad that i couldn't he couldn't be here for this bit um but Wout veghorst what a transfer six Foot six, Wout Weghorst. What a boy. Now, from a Burley point of view, this is unbelievable. They got paid about 24, 25 million pounds for the big boy, Chris Wood, from Newcastle. They then went out and found a better Chris Wood. They found a guy who has been brilliant for his German club, um, Wolfsburg. 70 goals in 144 games is a really, really good record. He's 29 and they paid just 12 million quid for him. Now, statistically, like his numbers are really, really impressive. When he was in the Eredivisie, he scored 13 goals back in 2016-17. The season after that, he scored 18 goals. He then came to the Bundesliga with Wolfsburg. He scored 17 goals. Um, not to mention the 14 assists he got as well as scoring 17 goals in 18-19. Sorry if I just blew your eardrums. That was only in 34 games. The year after that, the assist dropped off with just three, but he got 16 goals. Last season, 20 goals, nine assists. Already this year, not 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 so good with six goals and one, one assist. But from a Burnley point of view, like with the way that they play their football and the way that they need a target man, you can't get much more of a target man than a six foot six veg horse. Like he's un- He's not unreal. He's not unreal. Because otherwise, every club in the world would be getting him. But for Bar for Burnley, I need to Barcelona, but for Burnley, he is great. It's a good signing. I really hope, I really, really hope this works out um, for him. He is just a monster. And for Premier League defenders, like, it's going to be a tough, tough job marking him. But for £12 million, for a guy of his calibre, like, he's also a pressing machine, works so hard for his team. Um, it is a really, really good signing. Like, it, it may also possibly save them from the relegation drop as well if he scores like if he if he goes and bangs 10, 10 goals in this season like it may really really um do well for them and, and make them survive but that is our what a transfer and that is our tier list it'll be on screen right now let me know what you guys think of these transfers should any be should any of them be any higher should any of them be any lower uh, and if we've missed out any other transfers let us know in the comments below where they should have been as well but that is all the time we have for we need to talk today i hope you guys have enjoyed it if you want to see more football daily content then click on screen right now if you want to check me out then my social is zach jellab get over there and follow it uh joe will be back next week i probably assume uh we'll see you in a tomorrow if you want to watch a football daily video subscribe like the video bye